Right now I'm in the process of transferring uh, my seedlings right here into my homemade hydroponic system. So first you're going to want to fill up the water. As you can see the water's filled up. You want to fill it up just to the point where these little things will actually sit in the water. So how we're going to test to see if they actually do fit is put that top on, make sure it's nice and clicked in, and then we're going to go ahead and put one of these in and then we'll see if it's if it's actually, and you can see water actually dripped out of that. So that is touching the water, obviously. Um, you can even kind of look might be too dark to see in there but you can look through one of the other holes to see that it's uh, it is sitting in the water now this one is sitting about gay deep in the water so you know you don't want it you don't want it too shallow or the roots won't touch but you don't want it too deep where it's going to drown the plant so basically um, that's about perfect right there okay guys the next thing that we're gonna have to do is now put our our seedling in the little grow basket. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump out some of this. Get this sitting right at the right height. Still a little bit low or still a little high I mean. So now, all you're going to want to do is just basically fill this back up. Really not too difficult. Now that Groton, that uh, rock wool stuff that you were just growing them in, if that's what you chose to use, um, basically you just want to probably cover it with, uh, with these little ceramic pellets or whatever grow media you're going to use. Some people use ceramic like this, some people also use uh, um, pea gravel. But basically just fill it up to the top. Obviously I didn't use all these because some of the volume was displaced by, by that grow tongue. put in another one there and now this is ready to be stuck into your hydroponic system now obviously we're gonna want to do this after we have the water and nutrients set up with the hydro system because you don't want this to dry out of course it's in the rock rock wool so that'll, that'll help keep it moist but basically once that's all your water is all set up this basically just drops right in. Turn on your your um, <clears throat> your air pump and stick it under a light. Okay, guys. So I have this now set up. I put my all the plants I'm gonna have in this. Uh, these three are spinach, and the rest right now are romaine lettuce. Uh, those should grow pretty quickly as soon as they are almost ready. Um, I would say another like three weeks once they grow big enough I'll probably use a couple of them and then throw in some of that butter butterhead lettuce um, and that you know so that way I can utilize that also um, well, that came out pretty well um, I've got the pump going as you can see right over in the corner right there the pump is going you can kind of hear it and I actually, it's a double pump, and I'm putting both in uh, just to make sure that I'm getting enough air in there. But hopefully these do as well as those. Because those really, really did well. If they don't, I'll probably end up switching to 
just putting, just filling this thing up with, with the same media as this, and then, you know, planting them in uh, my lettuce in, in that grow media. This type of hydroponics divides by 10 the quantity of water needed to grow vegetables. It doesn't require any pesticides or chemicals, and you can be very productive in a very small surface. That's the reason why some people started to use this technique in arid places on urban areas. We have been on the rooftops of Singapore to meet Darren and learn how to do. At Low Tech Lab, we travel the world to find the best low tech inventions that are useful, sustainable, and accessible to all. We are having a hydroponics farm on top of a rooftop. It just happens that this rooftop happens to be on top of a commercial shopping area here in Singapore. Yep. And uh, what we're doing is we are actually having a farm that's growing vegetables for the community. Singapore is a very unique country. We import about 90% of the food, which means that our local farmers only produce about 10% of the food. So this means that most of our food is brought from overseas and this has a significant impact on our food security as well as the carbon footprint because of all the food miles that's travelled. So by having farms close to people, what it, this means is that we can cut down on the distance that food needs to travel before it reaches the consumers. On top of that, consumers also get to have fresher vegetables and definitely that's a best, a healthier vegetables. How much a rooftop like that produces? Well, we are on a very small uh, sort of rooftop, so that's a, we have about 3,000 square feet. And within this 3,000 square feet of land, we can grow about 12,000 vegetables at any one time. Um, so as a, as a rooftop farm, we believe that we are an integral part of the community. And these, this means that instead of, or rather on top of just providing food for the community, we also make sure that we provide labour to the community. So we look, at, look towards the people that are living around us for the manpower. We work with uh, people with disabilities. We try and hire retirees. And we try and make ourselves as inclusive of a work environment as possible so that everybody can now work on a farm and contribute meaningfully to the produce that is then sold to the community. And uh, I certainly hope that wherever we see an empty rooftop, we can always look and see how it can be converted into something meaningful for the community. I'll show you how to make low-tech hydroponics. Actually, this is like a small ecosystem. You mix organic waste into this water. This is a biofilter where bacteria transform those organic waste into nutrients. This water is pumped up to feed the plants. And it goes down through this filter back into the biofilter.
It's very well adapted for leafy vegetables. I prefer those you can plant directly like morning glory or mint or basil or spinach or sweet potato leaves. Just remove the lowest leaves and plant it. To feed the plants, you have to add some organic waste, for example, compost juice. I like growing my own vegetables because when you eat it so fresh, it keeps all its vitamins. In 2050, we will be 9 billion people in the world, 80% living in urban areas. Growing highly nutritious organic food in such a small surface looks like a good idea.